I've worked with 10 Weimaraners since 1970 and they're all somewhat different. Flo is, is the one that thinks more, she worries more. Topper just knows he's great. I like the uh, collision, the, the overlapping of human and, and animal. I've dressed them as people, but a lot of times they look like people even when they're without hats and wigs and sunglasses. Saks Fifth Avenue sent me all kinds of crazy clothes and uh, different designers. Isi Miyake, for instance, is really fun to work. How does a human thing like a dress fit on a dog? How do you make that work? It's, it's kind of challenging. Ninety percent of the photographs, dogs look melancholy. Intensity and focus, uh, I enjoy. Probably the sexiest photograph I've ever taken is one I titled Lolita, where a very young baddie, I think she was only six or seven months old, is sitting in a director's chair in a really remarkable way, and she's just looking back at the camera in, in such a blasé and riveting way, but she's just long and slender and youthful and completely sure of herself. I did a lot of photographs with mother and child, elevating one of the dogs to be taller. You think that's the grown-up, the shorter one is the child. I've had a dog look like they're riding a bike, you know, the, the bike's been stabilized and made safe. It's just like a sitting pose. So knowing the anatomy of the dog and knowing what their, their musculature can do, which is different from a human's. My dog Candy didn't really love the camera. I think it was actually the lights she didn't like. So she'd always go like this. Ended up using her flying, doing more acrobatic things. So she wanted to be there. Something riveting about a camera and a dog. I don't know, the way they look back at you and wonder what you're doing makes it uh, possible to do this. The wig makes everything here, even though there's this. 